Right then, I think we have to look into the reasons why Sheikh Jassim's bid to buy Manchester United has failed. As many of you know, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad uh, has informed the Glazers that he has withdrawn his process to buy the club, viewing their valuation as unrealistic when compared to his £5 billion plus final offer, leaving Sir Jim Ratcliffe as the only publicly declared interested potential buyer uh, or investor, depending on which way you want to see it, for Manchester United. Sheikh Jassim offered the Glazers almost double what their market uh, valuation was uh, based on the New York Stock Exchange. He was a cash buyer. He was going to clear the debts. He wouldn't have added any new debt to the club and he was going to put in another 1.4 to 1.5 billion for the stadium and for the team and for, for other purposes. Jassim wanted to buy the club outright and launched what his party described as a fifth and final bid back in June in an effort to get the deal over the line. The Qatari first bid for the club was made all the way back in February. Jassim's bid had floated the possibility of withdrawing in May after a lack of progress since making an apparent final bid as requested by the Glazers in April. And it's understood that he raised his offer in June, but it wasn't satisfactory enough for the Glazers despite being far more than the club's $3.3 billion valuation on the New York Stock Exchange. The difference between the parties um, was supposedly over the valuation, um, but there's also some talk that the Glazers weren't happy with his statement that he intended to return Manchester United back to its former glories, which I find incredibly childish if that's the case. And the difference between them being a mere valuation and the potential progress that could be made now um, with Sir Jim Ratcliffe, it does... And so does the wording on some of the, the reporting of this, by the way. It does leave open the possibility that Sheikh Jassim could be enticed back into what has been an incredibly protracted process, especially if protests against the Glazers continue or even ramp up, which they might. Sheikh Jassim's offer would have made United the most expensive sports team in history uh, by at least 200 million, eclipsing the deal to buy NFL side Washington Commanders, but it still fell short of what the Glazers' own valuation of the club was at around 6 billion, um, according to reports that came out earlier in the year. Figures in March show that United owed around £970 million through a combination of gross debt, bank borrowings and outstanding transfer fees with associated payments. And there's been no public comment from any party around this latest development. There is a ton of NDAs and secrecy around the bidding process, but there are leaks and there are ways for us to find out a little bit in terms of what's going on. The Glazer family have made no public statement since launching this strategic review around United in November of last year, in which they said it could lead to a sale or investment, and they were exploring all possibilities. But there's been Glazer and Qatar unrest from the start. Sheikh Jassim's promise, as I mentioned earlier, to restore United to its former glories with a completely debt-free purchase supposedly didn't amuse the Glazers, who saw that wording as implied criticism of their own tenure. Um, I hope you did see it as implied criticism of your own tenure, because it's fucking warranted and valid. I've been sitting at your local cafe, you're sitting there, you're sipping a brew, trying to browse the internet without some sneaky bugger peeking at what you're up to. Well, that's where our mates at Surfshark come in, offering you a peace of mind in this mad online world. Surfshark, it's a proper smart VPN thing, right? And they that's your mate that's got your back in a scrap. They're keeping all your online business hush hush, so no one's nicking your details, selling them off to the highest bidder, which is pretty useful, to be honest. And now here's the clever bit. If you fancy tricking the internet into thinking that you're sitting in a pub in London when you're actually on a beach in Spain, then Surfshark is your ticket. It's like being a globe trotting secret agent from the comfort of your couch. All those dodgy pop ups, gone. The ones that try and sell you some tat or trick you into giving your life story away, Surfshark's got this nifty feature that swats them away like they're nothing clean browsing no fuss top notch if you're thinking all right sounds good what's the damage what's the catch well pop in the code housen h-o-w-s-o-n and you are in for a treat three months extra free on the house no catch there's even a 30-day money-back guarantee so there is absolutely no harm in giving it a whirl right stay smart stay safe give surfshark a go there is a suggestion that the the shake jessin bid was doomed from the very start. After the bids had been submitted, the US merchant bank Rain were the ones that were running the takeover process on behalf of the Glazers, issued a warning for parties to keep their mouths shut. Bit Will Smith. 
And that was seen as a bit of a direct warning to the Qatari group after they'd spoken about returning to United to this former glories in their opening statement, a comment which clearly didn't go down well with the Glazers. And that report states that an offer many thought would render the purchase of the club a formality started on the wrong foot, and it failed to recover from that point. Alternatively, it was suggested that Jim Ratcliffe started out on the right foot and nailed the PR strategy from the get-go, presumably because he was looking to keep the Glazers involved. And there is some rumour going around that the Glazers didn't really want to sell. They were looking for investment initially, unless they could be absolutely blown out of the water with a big cash offer. I think they saw the bidding process which happened at Chelsea and decided that Manchester United is a far more a globally renowned brand would attract a lot more, not realising the fact that they'd absolutely destroyed the club's reputation over the last 18 years, saddled it with almost a billion, let's just fucking call it a billion, it's 30 million short of a billion, it may as well be a billion, of debt, as well as extracting 1.5 billion out of the club the last 18 years, not upgrading the training facility, not upgrading the stadium, and completely fucking crucifying any sort of relationship this club has with its fans that they thought they could actually go and bring in some extra cash, you fucking deluded set of pricks. So when Jim Radcliffe has come aboard and decided that he wants to, as many people have put it, get in bed with the Glazers, they're seeing the fact that the club has grown almost 10x, almost 10x in 18 years, and the trajectory seems to be that it will continue to grow in value and not decrease in value, meaning that if they just hold on to the reins a few more years, then that six billion will grow to seven, to eight, to 10, to 12, to whatever. And why would they be wrong? Michael Knighton, lol, tried to buy United for 10 million in 1990. By the end of the 1990s, United's price had gone up to somewhere in the region of three to 400 million. By 2005, it was 660 million, um, which didn't actually include the fact that the Glazers already owned uh, a, a decent size of the club before they launched the takeover. And now the, the outward valuation is 3.3 billion, but they wanted six to go. Hence, if someone would have paid it, it would have been worth six. It was worth five because Sheikh Jassim at least was willing to put in five. So I think you could quite easily convince them that it would be worth 10 if they just hang on. And that's what I think the Jim Radcliffe bid has enabled them to do or perhaps act on keeping around. Maybe if we just hang on out for another four or five years, see what this guy's able to do because... We don't have a fucking clue what's going on. If this guy's able to turn it around for us, maybe we'll make even more money. So there we have it. I do think that you're looking at a 1% a chance Sheikh Jassim comes back. Because billionaires aren't exactly known for putting their ego aside and doing business, are they? It looks like it'll probably end up being uh, Jim Radcliffe in bed with the Glazers. And then there's obviously all of those questions we need to ask about, okay, so is anything happening with that money that he's just paid? Just going straight to your pockets? Sweet. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.